Okay, good morning. Ooh, many people. Um, I'm going to talk about a different uh, geological aspect of the Mediterranean that it is one more aspect that makes this region unique also from the geological point of view. I think you have got some pretty good examples today, this morning and yesterday. Uh, this is a less dramatic uh, situation, but uh, still uh, interesting. Uh, and this is the fact that uh, the Mediterranean basin hides below the uh, uh, floor of the, um, uh, of, the, of the deep basins, below the seafloor of the Mediterranean, there is a so-called salt giant. And I will talk to you about this salt giant, telling you a bit of the history, how it was discovered, and what we are doing today uh, uh, to try to solve the biggest, uh, I would say, longest living geological controversy of Earth, and which is the, the origin of this salt giant. Um, okay, salt, just a few words. I guess you all know that salt is important in, uh, in uh, has been very important in history, social implications. Salt was the only way to preserve food until the refrigerators and the technology to can food that was invented. And so salt was dominating um, our societies. For salt, uh, there were wars. For salt, uh, people, uh, uh, countries, uh, emperors, kingdoms became uh, 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 dominant. And uh, therefore, salt was, was searched uh, uh, also underground. Uh, I will talk to you later about the rock salt. And as I said, uh, um, in, in, in the industry has flourished also for preserving, in this case, anchovies, salt anchovies. In the, we are in the uh, late 40s, I think, after the Second World War. So salt is important. Salt uh, is still produced uh, in beautiful places that I would recommend all of you to visit if you can. Uh, this is uh, the, the salt production in, uh, in, in Trapani, in Sicily. But it is also dug uh, from uh, salt mines underground. And this is a salt uh, mine in, in Sicily, the Real Monte salt mine, where you get uh, most of the industrial salt and also um, uh, eatable salt uh, that you find in Italy. Um, I'd say social relevance. This is something happened uh, uh, last year, less than one year ago, in a small village uh, in the Alps, in the Western Alps in Italy. This is the village. The elevation is about a kilometer and a half, so very far away from uh, any uh, sea and any salt mine, but still, uh, you know, salt, salary, salary, the name salary comes from the salt because the salt was so important to be uh, used as a way to pay uh, the work of people. And, and here in this village of Walser origin, which is a population coming from Switzerland, when there is a funeral, um, the family of the, um, uh, of the person that passed away gives uh, uh, still a, a pack of a kilogram of salt bought in the supermarket to the, to the attendants as a sign of respect. This is a valuable, or, or it was valuable, Valuable now, of course, it is something that is very cheap and you buy in the stores. But uh, the importance of salt is really pervasive in our society and I would say all over the world. Um, salt is also important from the artistic point of view. This is Mato Yamamoto that produces these beautiful um, uh, sculptures with salt. Um, and uh, I, I will show you at the end uh, how some people is even getting inspiration for dancing, uh, referring to salt. This is also to say that this is an important element and it is a geological element. So uh, let's talk about geology now. Salt originates in two ways, uh, or you find salt in two ways. Uh, by natural evaporation and it becomes of seawater it becomes incorporated into geological record uh, and you find that salt uh, as a rock salt uh, into mines. Again, this is the salt mine in Sicily we visited uh, a few months ago. Uh, or it can be produced by artificial evaporation of uh, seawater. In that case, you, you create these ponds and you, with, a, with a very sophisticated but old uh, technique, uh, you, you eliminate the, the salts that you don't need uh, so that you concentrate the um, uh, the sodium chloride, that is this white uh, material that is then used. And uh, uh, I, I want to tell you this about uh, the seawater, which is the origin of the salt. Um, 
the, in the seawater, there is a sort of mystery in, in, from my point of view, which is the so-called uh, Marset uh, principle, the principle of Marset uh, guy. That is, uh, uh, there are many, many ions dissolved in the seawater to produce the, the salinity, which is between 30 and 40 per mils in weight uh, globally. But even if you change this salinity, you go to the Arctic, you have uh, low salinity. You go to the Mediterranean, you have high salinity. The ratio of the relative concentration of these ions is always exactly the same. And nobody knows the reason. So that uh, you just uh, measure chloride, and then you can calculate from chloride uh, that is easy to measure all the others. It's, it's, a, it's a formula. And remember, chlor, chlor, uh, uh, chlorine, sodium, magnesium, the sulfate ion, calcium, and potassium. So what happens if you evaporate seawater? In a rigid sequence, you start precipitating calcium uh, calcite, um, calcium carbonate, or if you have some magnesium dolomite, but the dolomite, in many cases, is transformed uh, after the position of calcite. So it is very difficult to precipitate dolomite straight away. So think of uh, calcite, you remember calcium from the previous ions. Then uh, if you continue evaporation, you get uh, gypsum, which is uh, calcium sulfate, sulfate ion, calcium, so calcium is very important, uh, which is a hydrate, is, is a hydrate form. Then, then if it is, if you take this water away, you get anhydrite, which is basically the same formula with less water. If you continue evaporating, you get sodium chloride, which is the, this table salt, halite in geological terms. Uh, at this time, the, the seawater has a density which is about 10 times the original density of the water. And then in the very end, you get a number of uh, potash salts uh, chlorides uh, that uh, usually are these so-called bitter salts that when you evaporate water you want to get out, get rid, because they, are not, they don't taste good. So you have, we have all these uh, six uh, uh, ions of the, of the, of the Marsat principle that create uh, these uh, deposits, which are called uh, evaporitic rocks if they are thick enough to become a rock. Otherwise, you just scrape them with a puddle and you, and you create marine salt. So how comes that an ocean, marine water, becomes, um, uh, evaporates and, and creates the, pre the, the precipitation of the salt in the natural environment. And this is in two uh, situations. When an ocean uh, begins at the start of an ocean and uh, at the end of the life of an ocean, when an ocean is becoming uh, compressed between two co continents colliding and then destroying the ocean. And uh, for example, uh, 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 the birth of an ocean, you can think of the Rift Valley in Africa, the Lake Tanganyika. Uh, the, these two sides of, of the plate are, are uh, um, becoming divided. Uh, there is a depression, usually when when, when an, an ocean happens, uh, you have a mantle plume below a, a, a continental lithosphere. Uh, the region mm, goes up mm, hundreds of meters. Then there is a breakup. Uh, you have a lake initially and then subsidence. And this lake is eventually invaded by, by seawater if you are close to the seawater. And in this case, it, it could be that uh, the hydrological balance between uh, the new ocean and the precipitation and, and the input of water from rivers is unbalanced and you have more evaporation than what water coming in and you have evaporation and precipitation of salts. Another, uh, this has happened, for example, can you see that? It's probably not very clear. This is Africa and South America when uh, in, in, in the Mesozoic they were united. And then there was a, a continental rift uh, that, uh, with a triple point that separated uh, South America, Africa, and North America. And then th this happened exactly in, in this way. There was uh, water, the ocean uh, uh, invading uh, uh, the, the lake, and salt precipitation. This salt is now found on the two sides of the Atlantic uh, when the two separated. One uh, offshore, say, uh, uh, Angola and the other offshore Brazil. Um, at the end of an ocean, 
it is the case of the Mediterranean. The Mediterranean is, is complicated, geologically speaking, but basically it is a, a, a dying ocean. And the ocean that is dying is the Tethys Ocean. You see it here. Here we are 35 uh, million years ago in the Oligocene. There was the, the Tethys Ocean that was separating Africa and, uh, and Asia. Uh, the Atlantic was already open at that time. It was closing because of the convergence be between Africa and Asia. And today, this ocean that was connected from the two sides to the global ocean, now this ocean is closed. There is close connection to the Indian Ocean, and there is only Gibraltar allowing a connection on the other side. And in this case, the hydrological balance may become negative. So as, as it is today, there is less water coming from the Atlantic and the rivers and the precipitation that what is evaporating. And if you shut down the connection with the Atlantic in Gibraltar today, the uh, evaporation would cause the Mediterranean level to go down half a meter per year. So quite quickly, it would disappear and, and would leave a, a layer of evaporite of, of salts. Of salt. There are many um, salt deposits called salt giants in, ge in the geological record. Here is a map that we compiled. Uh, um, it, with the colors indicate their age. There are many very old Paleozoic age, and they are far away from the uh, oceans because, because the continents have collided. Then there are the Mesozoic uh, salt giants, for example, the one I told you before uh, in the southern Atlantic. The Gulf of Mexico is, is a big region uh, with, uh, with salt, uh, the North Atlantic. And then look at the yellow. The yellow is the most recent, and it is basically the Mediterranean salt giant plus some salt in the Pannonian Basin and in the Red Sea. But this is not only um, the closest to us because it is in the Mediterranean, but it is also the youngest because it was formed only five, about five million years ago. So geological timescales, always keep in mind uh, uh, chronology and stratigraphy. The Paleozoic salt giants, uh, we talk about uh, 260 up to 500 million years ago. The Mesozoic, the Atlantic, uh, were about 120 million years ago. Now we have the Mediterranean salt giant here. It was formed yesterday, let's say. And uh, we are very much interested in looking at this because it has not been deformed as, as normally uh, the, salt, the salt, uh, other salt giants are. And we can understand how they were formed. Salt is is uh, uh, impact on the on the um, um, landscape. Uh, uh, if you go with Google Earth and you play around the Zagros Mountains in Iran, you see this. This is a salt diaper cropping out uh, into a fold, an anticline fold, becoming dissolved very quickly. And for example, the dissolution of the salt in this 3D. Uh, uh, image uh, uh, caused the salt uh, to glide. Uh, they, they call them salt glaciers. And the salt moves. People say that if you go there, you hear the sound uh, of the moving salt. Um, uh, the salt impacts the morphology of the oceans, too. If you look at the seabed topography in the Gulf of Mexico, this is uh, uh, the Mississippi um, um, in Louisiana, um, all these uh, basins and ridges are caused by the salt that moves. Um, and also in the, in the Mediterranean, we discovered that if you look at the Bissell Plain of the Algero Balearic basins here, all these hills and mountains at the bottom of the sea are caused by the underlying salt that is trying to go up and, and, and deforming the sediments. Um, one thing. Uh, I said, if you close the, Mediterranean, the Gibraltar Strait, uh, you evaporate in a few thousand years of the Mediterranean. And I leave it, this to you. I don't want to go through, through this calculation. But if you calculate the surface, the average depth, uh, what, what you get if you evaporate the Mediterranean now is about 26 meters of salt, carbonates, gypsum, halite, and then the potassium salt. And this is not the case because the salt giant is a deposit that may attain uh, two, three kilometers of thickness. So one, one first question is how comes that we have this thickness of salt everywhere in all salt giants? It means that, uh, that uh, the basin, the ocean, has become a, a, sort, a sort of salt point when the, 
when uh, seawater was still coming in, evaporating, still coming in, evaporating, and creating the deposit. And we also know that you can, uh, you can generate salts by evaporating uh, river water. And you can get gypsum. Gypsum is, uh, is, is, is the primary salt uh, caused by evaporation. So, so the processes that cause the salt giant are very complex and very far from being understood. Um, uh, the facts about the Mediterranean salt giant that I present uh, to you now with these colors, you see in the western basin, this is a huge flat extension of uh, gypsum, then salt, and then gypsum, total thickness about two kilometers, buried by about uh, 300 meters of mud that were deposited on top of this salt uh, since five million years ago, more or less. The salt is deformed in some cases. There is very little salt in the Tyrrhenian, mainly because the Tyrrhenian basin was opened by stretching the Calabrian arc, moved the southeastward, and, and so the basin was open mostly after the, uh, the, the, the time of formation of the salt. And then there is another different uh, huge deposit in the eastern Mediterranean where there is no this gypsum salt, gypsum alternation, but it is basically all salt, up to two, three, we counted up to four kilometers in thickness. And you find it from Sicily to, to Lebanon, almost continuously, it's not entirely, cont almost continuously. This was formed, we know, from the stratigraphy because we can date uh, the deposits on top and below in some places, places where they outcrop in the Apennine, uh, in Spain, in Sicily, Calabria, and, and, and a little bit in Cyprus. It was formed in 640,000 years from five, basically from six to 5.3 million. It is made, we calculated the volume, is, a, is one million cubic kilometers of salt. This is why it is a salt giant. And when it formed, it subst subtracted 6% of the global ocean salinity. And there are people now trying to evaluate the impact of this, for example, on the freezing point uh, of the water in the polar regions. And there are some coincidences of, the, say, the onset of the Arctic uh, um, um, uh, the glaciation and the, and the Antarctic Peninsula glaciation in, in, in the Antarctic, in the Antarctica. Okay, a little bit of history. Um, geologists knew that something had happened uh, at that time in the Mediterranean uh, before, before the concept of the salt giant was developed. Um, because this guy, Raimondo Selli, in 1960, uh, termed uh, uh, the Messinian salinity crisis. Messinian is the period of the Miocene that, that, that coincide roughly with the formation of the salt. The Messinian salinity crisis, so a crisis of salinity, what is a crisis, we don't know, but it was to explain the deposition of gypsum bed that you can find if you want to have a beautiful um, excursion, go to the northern Apennine, uh, to near Brisighella, and you see the Vena del Gesso. This is gypsum, big uh, solenoid crystals of gypsum. And, and he thought that this was caused by some kind of evaporation, but he didn't know that it was everywhere. He didn't know there were cubic, you know, a thousand of cubic kilometers of salts uh, elsewhere. Then, the turning point was the deep sea drilling project. Uh, the Americans started in the, in the 60s to use, say like NASA, a, a vector, in this case a drilling vessel, a sort of old uh, style, uh, to drill for science at the bottom of the ocean. Instead of science looking out in the space because of the implications uh, uh, for, for, for wars and control, they, they wanted to spend money to look at how the oceans were, um, were formed. And uh, uh, before the program became really international, still managed by the, uh, by the US, they came to the Mediterranean. They drilled uh, the red uh, dots here, then the white dots were drilled later. They, did, they didn't know much what to find, uh, but, but some people found uh, uh, some uh, reflector below. The reflector is, a, is an evidence of some hard rocks uh, below the bottom of the deep basin, and they were allowed to touch this, and they got uh, even at uh, 4,000 meters of water depth here in, in, in the Ionian basin, this red dot, 
they found gypsum and salt. They were not allowed to drill deep because of safety, because salts may cause problems to the drilling uh, plant. But they got a few meters of this, and then uh, 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 the key observation was that in this salt, they found algal stromatolites. Stromatolites, algae, means you need light. So this gypsum and this salt that was found uh, four kilometers water depth, another 300 meters was below, was formed uh, under the sun. And so they thought the Mediterranean had to be empty of water. So the sea level had to go down. And they uh, formulated the theory of the of the desiccation theory of the Mediterranean Sea, developed by these three uh, people, Bill Ryan uh, uh, at Lamont, Maria Cita from the University of Milano, and Ken Shu, he was at uh, Etiach in Zurich at that time. They published this milestone paper in Nature and in 1973, and from then, about uh, 1,800 publications, scientific publications have been produced Sometimes one telling the opposite of the others, trying to explain this. That's why I said the biggest controversy. What is the implication of the sea level going down by about, uh, now we think, kilometer and a half, two kilometers in the Mediterranean? And then when the salinity crisis ended, the, 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 Mediterranean, the, the Atlantic flooded the Mediterranean again from Gibraltar. And uh, some recent modeling studies say that uh, there was a flux uh, with a velocity of 40 meters per second, so a quite a fast river, uh, invading and refilling the entire Mediterranean in about one year. So a, a catastrophic flood. You know? uh, and, but not everyone agrees on that. Uh, according to this theory, the Mediterranean was a sort of desert. Uh, the rivers were uh, eroding down into the edges of the Mediterranean, and, and, and we think we have the evidence of this canyon incision that were subaerial at the time, but, but they are submerged right now. And this was a sort of artistic interpretation. And in fact, uh, you may not see that, but in, in some studies, when you look at the data collected by the oil industry, uh, and you go down deep and you pick uh, uh, the surfaces uh, that correspond to the Messinian time. Here we are offshore the Ebro River. Can, can you see this meandering river? This is a, it looks like an aerial photograph of a river valley. This is buried a kilometer and a half below sediment of, on, the, on the Ebro River Delta. And this is the evidence that we think is, is that this was a subaerial region five million years ago. And then the artist in the US uh, even picture the Gibraltar waterfalls. This is guy Bill Out, that is a, this guy is still active. He does very beautiful uh, 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 drawings. Uh, and he gave us uh, permission to use this. Um, the cause of the closure of the, of the Gibraltar was tectonic. There was subduction. A slab uh, was broken off in half and the rebound of the upper part made the Gibraltar area to uplift and block the connection. This is supported by tomographic studies that uh, were just uh, mentioned for the, for, for the Pozzoli caldera. And then evaporation. Some people think that the, the sea level did not go down that much, and they have some evidence for that. This is why this is a, a controversy. Migration of animals was affected by this, and there are evidence in the evolution. Okay, and during controversy, why is it a controversy? Some scientists believe the Mediterranean level decreased by about two kilometers, I'm one of them. Some others think they, it, it didn't. Um, uh, there is disagreement on when, how long the sea level drawdown lasted. Some people say it lasted very long time, some people say very short time. And uh, there is a disagreement also on the way the Mediterranean returned to normal conditions. So this is an extraordinary example of how plate tectonics, climate, and environment uh, play together to generate uh, uh, um, a, a, an event uh, that, uh, that, that has very few counterparts in the world. So what are we doing now? 
as a group of scientists interested in this, we have uh, created a scientific network in the, uh, as a cost action. Cost action, uh, I have to say this very briefly, is, is the oldest uh, mechanism of uh, integrating scientists in Europe. Uh, it works uh, for 40 years already. Uh, these are the countries that are allowed to participate and we have the majority of this. We also have these uh, Northern African countries. We do meetings, we exchange uh, personnel going from one lab to another, we create uh, training schools, we will have four on the topic and we will last for four years. And w what is our reason? We know that now, since uh, 40 years ago, we, the technology has improved. So we have much better images of what is down there at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea using uh, vessels. Uh, this technique of investigating uh, the subsurface is, is well known, but, but the improvement have been dramatic. Uh, it is basically an echography. You energize the water with uh, air guns, you produce uh, uh, um, a sound that penetrates the water, the strata goes, goes back, you, you have a cable that is a few kilometers in length with some hydrophones, you collect the data, you go to the computer and you produce images, like an echography. It's, echography also uses uh, um, uh, P waves like uh, sound waves. Uh, this is a vertical section of the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. This is the seafloor, so this gray would be water. The depth here is about three kilometers. And you go down, you see th these are clays and sands that are folded on top of this transparent layer, which is the salt. We can see it, we can measure its thickness. Above it, in this layer, we have gypsum, and below it, we have gypsum. This is why we know, and we can calculate how thick it is and, and the volume of it. We don't know. No, nobody. It's up there. Yeah, no, no. Th this is salt that has gone up, uh, and, and this is a s closure. You know, the, there used to be salt, the salt has gone up, and this. Um, I didn't say clearly, but salt has the same property or similar properties to ice. If you, give, if you hit it with a hammer, it behaves rigidly, it breaks in pieces. But if you, if you give a, a slow stress, it will deform like a fluid like a glacier, you know? And the salt does the same. Uh, what, what it does, because it is less dense than these overlying rocks, it tends to go up in diapirs. And the diapirs move quite fast, like centimeters per year. Per year. And in this case, the diapir has gone up uh, nearly to the surface and there is no more salt uh, left here. Uh, more images, we have a clear picture uh, of uh, what we have uh, below, and uh, we need another technology, much improved since uh, the technology that Bill Ryan, Maria Cita, and Ken Shu had. Uh, and this technology is in, in what is now the old uh, deep sea drilling project, it's called the International Ocean Discovery Program. And we can access these modern structures to drill for science into the rocks. And we want to drill. And the, the project is called DREAM, because there are so many people who are dreaming to know exactly what happened five million years ago when the Mediterranean supposedly dried out. Um, uh, so it is a unique opportunity to understand the genesis, sedimentary, structural evolution, the biosphere. I'm not a biologist, but there is a living biosphere living into the salt, halophiles. There are fluid inclusion in the salt with bacteria and maybe viruses still living into the, that, whether they found them 100,000 years old in other soul giants, we hope to find it five million years ago. Some people extracted the RNA of a, of a cyanobacteria from the gypsum of, the, of these deposits. Uh, okay, four scientific question. We want to go here, offshore Spain. Are there any Spanish teachers around? You may have heard about this because the press, the, the, local, the local environmental associations are against this project because they think we are looking for oil and we are affecting the environment, but we are not. Actually, the, the drilling project checks very carefully that there is no oil because they don't want to interfere with the presence of hydrocarbons. We want to drill a few holes. We have our seismics, we have identified uh, the gypsum, the, the salt here, the, here we are between uh, Mallorca and Ibiza, the gypsum, 
and we want to go deeper down uh, in the in the deep basin to to look at this and see and see what really happened uh, using techniques like sedimentology, geochemistry, micro uh, paleontology, uh, geophysics uh, altogether. So our dream is basically you see here these are all the drill sites drilled by this program in 40 years in the North Atlantic and in the Mediterranean. Um, so nothing has ever happened in terms of safety. And our dream would be that uh, maybe in 2020 we can drill this and try to unravel this controversy. Then if we are lucky, we want to drill another deep hole here offshore Israel. But that requires the big vessel that we don't have at our disposal at the moment. So uh, maybe in the future I come back and tell you how it went. I want to say two more things. When you deal with geologic, big geological controversy, you find very uh, uh, appropriate what uh, this guy, uh, Charles uh, Burwell, who was a cardiologist, nothing to do with earth science, dean of the Harvard Medical School uh, a long time ago, he, in address to the students, he said, half of what we are going to teach you is wrong, um, and half is right. Our problem is that we don't know which half is which. <laughs> so this is the case. And um, if, if this works, I want to show how we work. We are a group of scientists. We are open to communicate, and we try to, to do our best. This was the... Uh, start kickoff meeting in Palermo of this uh, work. The video was produced by the same guy who is standing behind the camera there, Luca Mariani. We have students, we didn't have teachers, but we, we will in the future. We rely on students because the controversy is so long that maybe they will solve it and while well, we'll be retired. Okay, enjoy the movie. Thank you.